The Man in the Suit This series began a little over 7 months ago and has completely sparked a new age of analog horror. Seriously, tons of people got in on this Godzilla horror. When I initially started my journey into seeing if there were any Godzilla analog horrors out there, I was more looking for a ground level event where we see from first person POV a Godzilla attack. Needless to say when I stumbled upon the man in the suit, that isn't what I got, but that doesn't mean the direction it ended up going was any less interesting. The Man in the Suit follows the story of the behind-the-scenes process on the original Toho Godzilla films. According to the series, the actor who wore the Godzilla suit periodically began to start acting more and more strangely on the set of the movie. After the director notices the actor just holding still and not moving an inch, they get people to try and take the suit off. However, once they try to take off pieces of the suit, they realize the suit and his skin had fused into one. If you haven't already seen The Man in the Suit, I highly recommend giving it a watch before checking this out, because we are deep into the story already. From this point forward, the studio continued to use The Man in the Suit to play the character, even with the fact that after every movie, some other actor got messed up by The Man in the Suit. Godzilla vs. Anguirus ended with the actor fused to the costume, and the filming of Godzilla vs. Kong resulted in the death of the Kong actor. Where we had last left off, Godzilla Suitman had escaped the set and was off on the streets. Various newspapers and eyewitness accounts reported to have seen the giant Godzilla Suitman, but we never hear anything about him getting brought back. We got two new entries to cover today and a special something I want to check out at the end. But without further ado, there's some more Godzilla Suitman antics that we need to cover. But before I let you get too far, just wanted to say if you're new here and enjoy what you're watching, be sure to hit all those neat buttons down below, and be sure to follow us up on our new second channel, 4Player, where we have three parts out for our new Outlast Trial series. But anyways, now you can pass through. Majora Suit Incident, 1974. Entry 10. The first thing we see is what looks to be a trailer for the original 1964's Mothra vs. Godzilla. Everything plays out as normal, but just like our prior entries, we quickly get an outside man filling us in on some info. Luckily, it sounds like our inside man at the studio is going to tell us all about how Godzilla managed to escape, and hopefully, how we got him back. According to the spy, Godzilla Suitman's behavior started to head south after the treatment he had endured on the set. It sounds like after he fused with the suit, all human treatment went out the window and he became solely an animal to the crew. This definitely seemed to carry over with the Angira suit. They were downright going to start tasing him so that he would play his part. The only thing here though is Godzilla's suit man made it very clear he was hostile in certain situations. So where does this blame lie? Obviously the studio had many opportunities to not continue messing with things outside of their control. But what kind of corporation is going to do that? We learn that he was slathered in a paste to make him look shiny and had to wear glossy contacts to hide the bloodshot eyes. Also, who was capable of dragging this giant suit man around? It's clear that the treatment for these suit hybrids were not very good, but it does sound like the studio learned at least one lesson, and that's making the Majora suit a puppet instead of putting a person inside of it. However, the Godzilla suit man was unaware of the fact that no one was inside. In fact, he was fully under the impression that a living person was operating the moth. But when one problem gets solved, a new one always arises, and that's exactly what went down. Someone needed to be in the larvae suits. I guess those couldn't be puppeted. Yet one brave female actor on set volunteered to play the part. She figured the security they had would be enough if something went wrong. Even her parents were there to see her on her first day of the job. Is this her first acting gig? Cause, uh oh. As per usual, Godzilla Suitman snaps in the middle of filming. He goes after the moth puppet, biting all over it until he realizes what's truly going on. Figuring out the moth was a puppet and not a person sends Godzilla suit man into a frenzy, and he beelines it straight for the woman in the larvae suit. We see as our poor lady gets to be the next victim to get their head chomped on. At first bite, she was able to use the size of the suit to protect herself, but Godzilla suit man ain't leaving without his prize. Both her parents, being braver than any living soul, runs headfirst at the Godzilla suit man to try and protect their daughter. Needless to say, they didn't stand much chance.
Like previously, once the parents were taken care of, Godzilla Suitman went over to hover over the larvae suit. It sounds like the production team took extra precautions and started to tase Godzilla Suitman until he moved away. However, the electric rage that courses through him sends him barging through security and escaping the set. A team gets sent out to go retrieve Godzilla Suitman, our inside man being one of them, as four others were sent to keep watch of the woman in the larvae suit. It took the team an hour to finally track down Godzilla Suitman, giving him enough time to be in the newspapers and for plenty of people to see him. However, they ended up finding him in the middle of the forest, not acting crazy or anything, just wandering the woods, taking in nature. Yet once he notices that people are onto him, the calm nature quickly fades and he's back in business. At this point, Godzilla Suitman is surrounded, yet it seems like he has one more trick up his sleeve. He begins to shake violently, and all of a sudden, this pool of boiling red liquid, said to be his blood, starts to projectile vomit out of his mouth. This, this is, is disgusting. disgusting. A comment I read theorized that this was his attempt at using his atomic breath, but in a much more graphic, nasty fashion. The team was still able to apprehend Godzilla Suitman and return him to the set. We even get a neat photo of the forest where he just completely puked his brains out. Once we return to set, we are still left with whatever is remaining of the woman in the larvae suit. In an unexpected turn of events, where we fully expect her to be fully fused with this suit, we actually get a much more disturbing reality. It looks as if our poor woman in the larvae suit is now just a woman larvae. This is downright haunting, and if you thought we were already in body horror territory before, we certainly are now. I really hope this lady isn't going to have to go through what I think she is going through, but I fear she is slowly going to turn into an actual Mothra, the first fully evolved monster to be born in this world. 7 Updates, 1964, Entry 11 This entry begins and we learn about several updates following the events of the Majra suit. Apparently, our inside man passed by a room where a government figure was talking with a Toho executive. We can see the transcript for this conversation in the description below. From the sound of things, our mystery government figure was the one who was performing those weird tests on Godzilla Suitman in the dorsal extraction entry, and the speech that angered him would have been the Oppenheimer speech we heard playing in the back as well, which very obviously would have angered our Godzilla Suitman. So from the sounds of it, Toho is working with some classified agency that is doing research on the suit man. A deal of some sorts has been struck to where if another incident occurs, government gets the suit man. The next update we hear about is the fact that the cocoon has formed in the prop warehouse. When people tried to remove it, an orange gas sprayed and flooded the room. No one was hurt by the gas and everyone was evacuated. But instead of removing it, it sounds like they want to keep it. This clearly frustrates our characters as it's clear the studio has no care for human life if they are going to keep pulling this nonsense. The third update is that specialists arrive at the area where Godzilla Suitman vomited all that supposed blood. However, when they arrived, it looks as if the blood substance had thickened up and became incredibly radioactive. A hazmat group had to go in to investigate the situation. The whole area ended up getting closed down as no one dared to even touch the substance. Our fourth update still revolves around this blood puddle. Someone at the scene reportedly saw an eyeball in the puddle, but they weren't too sure what they saw. See, my theory is that all that blood and crap Godzilla Suitman vomited up was his old body that had just rotted up and completely killed over inside the suit, making him now just Godzilla, with no man inside him anymore. The hazmat team looked around to see if they could find any eyeballs, but they weren't taking many chances on getting too close to this puddle. No eyeball was found, and the area was off limits. Our fifth update is that Toho is planning on making yet another movie. We heard about this slightly in the description conversation, but still, what a silly move on their part. Our sixth update seems to be a more personal one. It looks like our character had received a nice little letter from his daughter, yet on the back, it looks like perhaps his wife had written a little something too. I have been worried about you. It was only supposed to be one movie. Are you acting more? Are you okay? What's going on? Something is going on to where our inside man hasn't been able to see his family. Is it possible that the crew who know about Godzilla Suitman are under some strict supervision? Who knows, but from the sounds of it, our inside man has no way of leaving. 
The last update we receive is concept art for the new monster. Oh boy. However, he says that this time, he is going to try and intervene. Intervene in what way, I wonder? The last image we get from this entry is a tease of our next monster. Sir King Ghidorah has entered the chat. I didn't think that the series could get any more interesting, yet here we are. The reveal of the larvae is truly a fine piece of body horror right there. A lot of that awful imagery just started flooding my brain when I realized what had happened. I'm very curious to see our first look at Ghidorah. It sounds like the studio is going to try and take even more precautions on this next film, but I have a feeling no matter what they do, something is going to go awry and someone is going to end up dead. The next exciting piece of Godzilla horror content I found was exactly what I had been looking for. Found footage ground level POV of a real Godzilla attack. And this channel right here is providing all the goods. There's three really short Godzilla found footage animated shorts, but it's clear that as each one came out, the quality just got better and better before we were met with this fine piece of art. Everything about this just strikes my heart with almost that T-Rex feeling I get with Jurassic Park. Needless to say, the end of this short truly made me tense up. All of that to bring us into a full entry into analog horror. Godzilla 8mm Found Footage The following footage was shot by Henry R. Hill of New York in 1954. It was released to the public in 2024 by court order. Playing in the background, we get an audio interview with Mr. Hill, six years after the footage was recorded. According to Mr. Hill, the government had confiscated his tape and is attempting to cover everything up. We then get to see what it is he had filmed. I love the way Godzilla is being depicted here. We know this guy can animate a fully lit, realistic Godzilla, but that's not scary enough. What's scary is putting Godzilla in pitch black, where only his eyes glow in the dark. And occasionally, the shine of the spinning lighthouse catches a fully lit glimpse of our creature. Even just the way Mr. Hill describes his experience with Godzilla is incredibly haunting. But as it got closer and passed by me, I could feel it all around me like the air was turned from poison. He states that as Godzilla got closer and closer, it felt like the air around him was turned to poison. And soon after that, he started to have bad health problems. We learn that Henry Hill died three months after the interview had taken place. This idea that being a survivor of a Godzilla encounter could still leave you with life-threatening issues later on. I can only imagine it would be the tons of radiation that Godzilla carries around with him. Like I said in my last video with the Walton Files, we are in for a new age of internet horror, and this is further proof of that. The capabilities that such a small group can have is endless now. This little two minute Godzilla short was probably more effective in conveying a sense of fear better than any of the recent live action films have been. And that's mostly because these new live action films aren't even geared towards being frightening or intense really, just mindless action. Unfortunately, it feels like our Godzilla and King Kong movies have just turned into the modern Transformers saga. Not to say the latest Godzilla and King Kong movies haven't been enjoyable, but they've just gone so far off to what I believe truly makes them shine the best. I absolutely cannot wait to see more of the man in the suit and more of these Godzilla found footage shorts because they are actually so inspiring. And I know if it makes me want to go out and make some more horror stuff, I'm sure it has that effect on others as well. I can't recommend these creators enough as their work has been top notch. But that'll probably do it for this video. If you guys have any sweet analog horror recommendations, by all means, leave them down below. And keep an eye out for any crazy Godzilla suit men lurking the neighborhood. <laughs>